author opinion of Dennis Keane at the history, geography and architecture, culture and life matters of Kazakhs in the program Discovering Kazakhstan. On today's episode, Almaty's Railroad Neighborhood. Climbing on Soviet locomotives. Asana's gleaming new station. Salut, privet, and hello. I'm Dennis King, and today on Discovering Kazakhstan, we will be discovering the world of Kazakh trains. There is no other place in the world where the railroad so dominates life as it does in Kazakhstan. In this huge and mostly flat country, trains are the ideal way to move around people and goods. The rail infrastructure here is so vast that the national train company, Kazakhstan Temrzola, is the largest employer in the entire country. It is these rail workers that are turning Kazakhstan into a major international transport hub, connecting China in the east with Europe in the west. Come along as we explore life on the rails along what many people are now calling the new Silk Road. Almaty is unusual in that it has not one, but two train stations, Almaty 1 and Almaty 2. They were originally designated for different purposes, with Almaty 1 mostly used for freight and intercity trains, and Almaty 2 mostly used for suburban trains. It was Almaty 1 that came first, with the original station built in 1929. And there is a neighborhood surrounding the station called Pervaya Almata, or First Almaty, that is full of railroad history. At the center of it all, of course, is the station itself, Almaty 1. For rail fans, the best vantage point in the entire city of Almaty must be at the Almaty 1 train station, where there's a pedestrian bridge that connects the station to the neighborhood over on the other side of the tracks. From here, you have a fantastic view of a variety of passenger and freight cars, but not only that, an amazing view of the beautiful Alatau Mountains that ring the city of Almaty. We spent so much time traveling around the country, discovering Kazakhstan by train, that these passenger cars at this point almost feel like home. We've spent hours here sleeping and eating, and inside these cars, you can pretty much find anything you need. You could spend your whole life on one of these wagons. So I wanna take you inside and see what kind of amenities can be found on these passenger cars. <laughs> I am a firm believer that a classic Kazakhstani train adventure should take place in Platzkart, the class of passenger car that is the most affordable but also the most basic. What you may be lacking in privacy because you don't have your own little cabin, you more than make up in companionship. You get to meet the strangers who are sleeping all around you, they share tea with you, go outside the train and buy a melon, cut it up and share it with your new friends. It is a perfect illustration of what makes Kazakh hospitality so special, is that even if you don't know these people at the beginning of the journey, by the time you reach your destination, they are inviting you to their homes. Now this is a class of passenger car that I didn't even know existed. It's called SV for Spalny Wagon, which is kind of like the sleeping car. Of course you can sleep in any of these cars, but in this place, check out how much space you have. Just two beds in here, you can get some of the best sleep of your life. As you're going down the tracks and you hear the click clunk, click clunk, that kind of lullaby will put you right to sleep. You'll wake up and be able to stretch your arms all the way out in the morning. This is luxury. I 
have found my place in the passenger car class that is called coupe. With the coupe, you have a little bit more privacy. You've got this door that can open up and close, closing you off from the rest of your passengers. But in here, you get to make your own little home for however long you're going to be on the rails. You've got a bed. They give you some linens and some towels for you to stay warm and clean. And then you just look out the window and watch the world go by. The restaurant with the best view in Kazakhstan is not atop any kind of skyscraper in Almaty or Astana, but in the Vagon Restaurant, their dining car. From here, the step is whipping by out your window. You can see the whole country while pouring yourself some tea and ordering some traditional food. On the menu, they've got manti, plov, anything that you have been dreaming of while you've been sitting in the cramped corners of the sleeping car. Here, finally, you have some space, you have some freedom, you can make some friends with some of the other passengers. There's no better way to pass the hours than here with a warm cup of tea. so many trains in Kazakhstan and it has always been a dream of mine to actually get up into the front cabin where the engineer is here driving this massive machine. Of course it's beautiful to be able to sit in one of the train cars and watch the scenery go by but to be up here at the front and have this view out over the train yard uh, really gives you an idea of what it feels like to be an engineer in control of such an important piece of infrastructure. Here we can see that in front of the engineer there are all sorts of kind of dials and doodads. I have no idea where I would even start if I tried to drive this thing. He is a true professional who's been doing this for years. It's a place uh, that feels quite comfortable. After all, they might have to be here for hours driving this train through the steppe. So I was not surprised when I saw that here. If everything to kind of make themselves feel at home, including a microwave, to cook up some meals for the road. Now, for safety and security reasons, I understand why they actually wouldn't want us to be in here when they're actually out on the rails uh, traveling from city to city. Here we're in a very controlled environment. We're going for a short little drive within the train yard at the Almaty One station. Um, but to be able to feel this locomotive moving forward and imagine that it could be pulling dozens of train cars behind it, you can really feel the power of this machine. These shiny new diesel powered American Kazakhstani locomotives are a sight to see, but I'm a stickler for history. I just love to see old steam powered locomotives like this one that were built during the Soviet Union. Though the coal-powered steam locomotive may be out of service, there are still some Soviet engines that keep on chugging along. This here is the VL-80S, the VL standing for Vladimir Lenin, who of course was the founding father of the Soviet Union. Though it was built in 1981, it is still in fine condition. If it weren't for the red star of communism that is on the front of these locomotives, you may not even know that it is such an old relic from a long gone country. Because every year they've got workers like this working hard to keep them looking fresh. He's painting every single letter, every detail, so that it looks like it's brand new.
The neighborhood of First Almaty, near the Almaty 1 station, would never have existed without the railway. The houses here were built by railroad workers for railroad workers. The theater, the park, the hospital, the stadium, everything was provided by the National Railroad Company. And the centerpiece of this company town was a kind of community cultural center called the Railroad Workers House of Culture. In Almaty, many groups had these kinds of buildings. The engineers at the airport had the Aviators Palace of Culture. At the Almaty Textile Factory, they had their own House of Culture. But I think that the Railroad Workers House of Culture is probably the one that is still most used to this day. Though it was built in 1958, 60 years later, there's still something going on here almost every day. And by the way, if you look up at the top, you can see there the year it was finished, 1958, along with the Star of Communism and the emblem of the Soviet Railroad Ministry, a hammer crossed with a wrench. The Soviet Ministry of Railroads was so powerful that it even had its own kind of parallel healthcare system. And the railroad hospital is still a site that you can see in First Almaty. It's a pleasant place to come for a walk because outside of the grounds, there is a kind of sculpture garden uh, featuring statues and busts to scientists such as the Russian psychologist Pavlov or the Central Asian Al-Farabi. Almaty 2 is the station that is more familiar to Almatians who live in the city center, as it's located right at the end of Abelaik Han Street, one of the city's main boulevards. Arriving here, you are greeted by a spectacular view of those Alatau Mountains, and with just a five-minute taxi ride, you can be anywhere in the central district. Unlike the Almaty 1 station, which was left with a utilitarian, minimalist appearance after its 2007 renovation, the Almaty 2 station retains all of the charm of its 1930s architecture. Classical columns are topped with hammers and sickles, and statues and bas-relief sculptures show the proletarian heroes of the Soviet Union, from miners to apple pickers. Train stations are great places to find mosaics, murals, and other colorful examples of public art. These provide a great way to make a good first impression on visitors and they're also the perfect distraction when you're sitting and waiting for your train. In the ticket hall at Almaty 2, there is a lovely mosaic with three parts. On the left and the right, you can see iconic buildings and monuments from Astana and Almaty. And in the center, there is a joyous depiction of Kazakhstan's ethnic diversity, with a Kazakh playing the Dombra, a Korean woman dancing with a fan, everybody wearing traditional costumes, playing instruments, and having a dance party. One of my favorite places at the Almaty 2 station is a place that you really have to seek out to find. It's a kind of secret art gallery that's located in a waiting room for disabled people. I encourage you to come in and take a peek because what you'll find is really neat. On the walls here is a small kind of museum dedicated to Kazakhstani paintings with a railroad theme, including one of the most famous Kazakhstani paintings of all time, a work by the artist Abohan Kasteyev showing the arrival of the Turk-Sib Railroad to the Kazakh countryside. In many parts of the world, train stations have gotten so big with so many layers of security that you only get to greet your loved ones once they've stepped out of the station. One thing I like about Almaty 2 is that people can actually come out here onto the platforms. So as soon as you hop off the train, your friends are taking your bags, giving you hugs, and you feel like you've come home.
The railway is so central to the history of Kazakhstan that in Almaty there is actually an entire museum dedicated to the world of trains. Located in the center of the city at the corner of Nazarbayev and Karasai Batr streets, the Central Museum of Rail Transport has been showing off railway relics since 1999. The Railway Museum is understandably popular with kids, and I think one of the most popular attractions is the model train tracks that we have here. It's so fun to see all these locomotives that we are familiar with from the Kazakhstan Railway here in miniature zooming around. You have little models of train stations like Almaty 2 down there. You have bridges and tunnels and even some of the depots where they repair the trains. But it's fun to be able to be here with groups of children and to see that not only are they learning a lot about this important infrastructure and history in Kazakhstan, but they're having fun too. Making model trains is a hobby that's probably found around the world, but it is a particular obsession here at the train museum. Because after all, this is a place where people have a real passion for these machines, but also the people who work here are mechanics and engineers, the very kinds of people who are good with working with their hands and putting things together. So it's no surprise that the model trains at this museum are really, really impressive. And we can immediately recognize some of the locomotives that we saw at the Almaty 1 station, uh, some of the steam locomotives, the diesel ones, going all the way up to the modern machine. Machines. But here we don't just find model trains, but models of everything that help us understand how this entire elaborate infrastructural system worked. This, for example, is a whole model that is explaining how steam locomotives would have been serviced back in the day. And it answers a question that I've always had. You notice when you take the train throughout Kazakhstan that next to almost every old train station, you see these water towers. And I always wondered what they were for. Well, it turns out that steam locomotives, in order to make the steam, need water, and that water is coming from these water towers. Returning to our theme of analog communication, I want you to imagine the last time you were sitting in a train station and you hear over the PA, attention passengers, train from Almaty to Astana, now boarding. Imagine before this PA system ever existed, station masters had to rely on what were called station bells in order to communicate the arrival and the departure of trains. Well, nowadays at the Almaty Train Museum, there's a little bit of a tradition when the tourists themselves arrive or depart, they come and they ring this bell. Here it is, the largest and newest train station in all of Kazakhstan, Astana Nurlijol. When President Nazarbayev came to tour the grounds when it first opened, he remarked with pride that there is no other train station like this in the rest of the post-Soviet space. And I have to agree. If you look at other train stations in Kazakhstan, they tend to be pretty modest one or two-story affairs. But this one has six levels. And you would think that the trains arrive on the first floor, right? But actually, one of the most unusual things about the building is that they arrive on the third floor. If you look to the left or right of the building, you see that there are these tall overpasses that take the trains suddenly off the ground and lead them up into the middle of the building. And once you get off, there's a whole floor with a food court, there's another level with a hotel. You can spend an entire day just exploring the Nurli Joel Station. The trend these days when building train stations and airports is to have these big soaring ceilings to give you that feeling of space and freedom that comes with travel. And the Nurli Joel station really hits that mark. When you arrive here, it's not like when you come to the old stations with those low plaster ceilings that feel claustrophobic as you're huddled in with the masses. Here, with all of this space and glass and steel, you know that you've arrived to a modern city. A lot 
of new buildings in Kazakhstan have architectural models in the lobby so that when you come, you can appreciate this new structure from all sides. But I think anybody who grew up playing with model trains is especially going to like the model of the Norley Joel station because you can see they even included every last little wagon in there. And it has flashing lights. And looking here, we're somewhere inside that station. But outside, you see that the parking lot is actually less parking lot than it is a park. And what's neat is that when they made this little park space out here, they made it green. So there are special places where it collects the rainwater, and then they recirculate that rainwater in order to irrigate the grass and the trees. That means that the station is not only big and beautiful, but it's eco-friendly too. When you arrive at an old station in Kazakhstan, seeing rain clouds in the distance might make you a little bit nervous because you know that as soon as you step off the train, you're stepping out into an open platform that is open to the elements and you might get soaked. But one of the special features at Nurli Jol is that all of the platforms are covered by a giant overhanging roof. So that rain or snow, you are gonna stay dry. In a city like Astana that is famous for its extreme weather, this is a feature that local citizens have been raving about. Now that the new train station has been built, Astana has two train stations. Trains like this one, which are... Unlike the former capital of Almaty, which is located on the edge of the country, Astana is prized for its central location, and it's surrounded by a ring of mid-sized cities. That means that Astana is particularly well-suited for commuter rail. To get to these other cities like Karaganda, Temurtao, and Kokshetau, you can take the Electropoyas, the electric train, such as this one that we see here just arriving to the station. These have always been called not elektropoys, but elektrichka in the local parlance, a kind of cute name for these trains that are fed by overhead rails. Dear passengers, attention. like you to meet Diana. Diana is the voice of Nerli Jol. When you're in the concourse and you hear some voice out there announcing the times of the train, telling you not to miss your ride, it is the voice of Diana. It's a pretty cool job to have this power to be able to guide people throughout the station and she can say it in three languages because in Kazakhstan announcements have to be made in Kazakh, the state language, Russian, and in English. Train stations can be stressful places. Maybe you're running late for your train, or you've just come to a strange new city and you don't know where you are. So I like that in the Nurli Joel station, they've put a bright blue piano to help people relax. And the good thing is that in Kazakhstan, a lot of people can play the piano. There are music schools all throughout the country, thousands of people who, are, who have there are musical schools throughout the country, thousands of people who have a proper classical musical education. And so I think on any day you could come by this little piano here and find somebody playing Mozart or Beethoven. I don't have much of a training, but I'll see what I can do to lighten the mood in the train station today. People 
people these days have become inseparable from their smartphones. And when your battery is running low, you just start to get a little bit nervous. And you might have seen recently, if you go to train stations and airports, there's an uncivilized sight as people kind of crowd around the few outlets that you can find on the ground. That's why I really appreciate that at the new station, they've made this whole station here where you can come and charge your phone. You can plug it in if you've got this kind of outlet, you've got little USBs here, and so you don't have to worry if you're waiting for your loved one to come and you're running low on batteries, how they're gonna find you. You're gonna have a full charge so that you can stay in touch. You know what I like about Kazakhstan? I like that you can go to a train station and you can order a samsa, a kind of traditional Central Asian pastry with dough and meat. But at the same time, you can also get a New York chili dog. And I think this kind of shows something about the Kazakh philosophy, which is that on one hand, people are really proud of their traditions, proud of their cuisine, and anywhere you go, you can always find traditional food. But at the same time, Kazakhs are very hospitable people. And the most important thing is always making their guests comfortable. So if you're an American tourist coming to Astana and you have a craving for a New York hot dog, you can find one. You're always going to be happy and feel right at home. For me, the coolest thing about the Nurli train station is that they have Kazakhstan's very first capsule hotel. I'm whispering because inside these capsules are visitors to the train station who rented their own little unit and they're taking a nap, so we have to be respectful. But I want to check this out, what it's like to stay in your own capsule. You may be coming in for just a short trip and you don't want to splurge on a big hotel. You just need a few hours of rest so you can rent out a little unit like this. They give you a special card. And then check this out. <laughs> Very futuristic. It's no surprise that these capsule hotels were invented by the Japanese. It's a very populated country with not a lot of space, so this was the perfect solution to be able to fit a bunch of people into one small kind of uh, area like this while actually making it quite cheap for people who stay here. And inside here, you really have everything you need. You've got a TV screen with some headphones. You've got a... Uh, check this out. Some lights you can even change according to your own preference. And I'm coming a little bit. You can see really nice, comfortable bedding and just enough space to relax. Now, you know, I'm almost six foot tall. I'm not a short guy, but I feel like I've got plenty of space in here to make myself comfortable. So after a long day of exploring the railroads of Kazakhstan, I think it's time to say goodnight. Thank you for joining us today on Discovering Kazakhstan. Until next time, salbo, paka, and goodbye.